so and okay i just um don't to do too long um um introductions um sebastian uh danny great you're here sebastian can you also show yourself ignacio you too i'm i'm deactivated <laughs> you're this moment <laughs> i'm not allowed to share my screen <laughs> okay now i think i can no i cannot <laughs> min can you help sebastian okay i think now it should work okay perfect ignacio yeah i think i'm here I'm here. Okay, so then I have to make the window a bit bigger so that I see you. Okay, there you are. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So let's. Um, so we we want to discuss basically <clears throat> what we what we what we learned today, um, and we have um, um, three representatives of the module manufacturers, integrated module manufacturers. Um, we um, we that already presented today, and we have also. A representative of uh, leading testing in, in institutions. So just um, to to um, give a brief brief introduction. So we have with us um, Danny Chan, um, who is the global vice president at uh, Jinko Solar. Um, she's part of the leadership team. So welcome, Danny. Happy to have you, especially so late. <laughs> and. Um, then we have with us uh, Ignacio um, Espinoza, um, who is um, who's representing um, what? Sorry, uh, who is representing JA Solar as um, and works as a senior technical manager. Um, then we have with us Sebastian Petrecek, who is the vice general manager, Solar and commercial products, Greater China at TÜV Rhineland, and we have um, again with us Hongbin Fang. So it's great to have two people based in China, Hongbin and Danny. Oh no, so Sebastian two, uh, three, mm -hmm. and one um, in Spain with Ignacio. Oh no, and Hongbin, sorry, in the US. So we span basically three continents. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, so technology works. Um, what we want to do, so we have 45, 50 minutes to, to talk about um, what, what we learned today. And what I, I would really like to understand first is maybe to set the scene that everyone um, briefly explains what are your plans once again, because maybe not everyone has been there through all the presentations. What are your expansion plans for M10 182 millimeter meter wafer modules. And so I think I would like to, yeah, um, so maybe maybe Hongbin first, um, then Danny, then Ignacio, um, and we start with the module manufacturers. Hongbin? Oh, okay, yeah. So long G actually we are uh, focusing on 182, right? And that's the yeah. next step after the successful uh, introduction of 166 last year. Right, so I think uh, for 182, currently we plan to factories in China, total capacity about 13 gigawatts by the end of the year, right, in about a month. And so, and then we'll move on from there, uh, inc increase the capacity of uh, 182 as we, you know, uh, looking at the market and then demand uh, from customers. Okay, wonderful. Danny? Um... For 182 wafer based uh, um, panels, our um, expansion, 100% of new expansion lines will go for that size, which represents 30 to 40% of a total capacity by the year 2021. Okay, wonderful. Ignacio? Yeah, well, for us, uh, GA is clearly betting for this product for the following years. Uh, we are we are closing this year with 15 gigawatts of capacity for the for, for the next year we will we will have 30 gigawatts and almost the half of this production will be represented by m10 uh, modules so yes we are starting the year with 500 megawatts uh, monthly the production and we will end the year uh, around 2.5 gigawatt uh, monthly so yes, it's clearly our strategy for this uh, product that we are uh, feeling it will be main product for the following years. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, that's considerable amounts we are looking at. So when you when you look at your um, expansion, so how how is the the or or um, maybe also to Sebastian, have you already seen um, actually some products entering already TÜV for testing? Yeah, in, indeed, um, Michael. So, but we, I think this trend has started at the beginning of, of this year. So we're working on, on certification projects at the moment to get this technology ready to enter the market. And I think there's still a kind of early stage, but like the first um, module and module types already certified with us. Okay, perfect. So um, how, how has the ramp up of, um, of the production lines from ingots to modules, you're, you're all integrated, um, been, been progressing. So um, what has been particular ch challenges with 182? Because 166, I think that was pretty easy um, with, with current lines, but 182, I think you, you probably needed often new machinery. Um, are there any any issues that, that, that were there or any challenges in particular or um, are you all happy and it went only smooth? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so whoever wants to, yeah. Yeah, Danny? Yeah. Um, we are doing pretty well with Ingot to module ramp up, particularly our newly built uh, wafer and cell production lines will uh, enable us to reach our aggressive uh, 182 panel capacity goal and then strengthen our vertical integration. And 30 gigawatt uh, wafer, 30 gigawatt uh, cell, and 40 gigawatt panel. So it will, um, will be a massive milestone for Jingle Solar. We spent a lot of time getting design right, and we went through um, six months of every production uh, details, including the manufacturing efficiency, including the defect rate, etc. So it's going to be pretty great. Uh, currently, the big challenge for us is not the equipment or the process or the manufacturing. Uh, the know-how. I think the currently the big challenger is the reliable supply and the cost of sub-material, particularly glass. This could be um, a bottleneck for next year, although this is not the single problem for 182 panel. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me chime in. Uh, you know, with Alongji, uh, so we have started uh, 182 production, right? We have finished our first uh, 100 megawatt, 103 uh, megawatt uh, project de uh, delivery, right? So, so far everything, you know, all how our 182 millimeter uh, production is uh, happening. We started from a new factory, right? For both cell and the module. So everything goes pretty nicely, right? Even with the, for the new technology and new fab, and the yield actually close to you know 166 uh, baseline, and so we are very you know happy to see the result. And as Danny mentioned, I think the main change probably on the more on the supply side, how we can cope you know as an industry to make sure you know the supply of the material is sufficient. Okay. Okay. You got there. Yeah, well, for us, well, until now, the ramp up of these production lines, it's going smoothly. Uh, uh, this is happening because, well, as you know, we are manufacturing the whole process now from wafers to cells, as other colleagues here. And yes, well, these challenges to set up the production lines uh, were, were bigger as well. And we need to stabilize the, the, ang the angot module process the angot yields, the cell efficiency, the model power, well, this, this would be the key points for, for this production lines, no? But yes, we were so meticulous adapting and preparing this manufacturing process during the development stage in the, in the past when we were not producing the, the, the products yet. So it is, it is helping us to set up the production lines smoothly and we don't have any remarkable challenge uh, for the moment, no? Well, further than this, it is true that this automatization in the in the lines is requiring a higher qualification for the professional engineers who are operating the, the lines. No, this is a reality. But well, everything is going smoothly, yeah. Okay. 
yet we are feeling it's this is not a big step because yes this is the natural way of the technology no so so this is our our experience yeah okay so and um, and danny already mentioned that at the moment there are some um, issues in the industry bottlenecks uh, i think in particular for glass but also for other processing materials prices has have been going up so um how is this um affecting um the new um or the output of the new new line. So what um, what can we anticipate? So um, and I'm I'm just not talking at the moment. We want to talk now about 182. But um, when I'm talking to the market at the moment, I'm obviously hearing. So that means uh, that we're at the moment, especially in a situation that people really cry. Oh, I don't get anything anymore. Um, and uh, when can I get uh, the next? Um, batch of uh, modules um, and it's not only about pricing it's simply that nothing comes because the Chinese market is uh, currently um, yeah pulling a lot um, also and then comes the bottleneck on top so but but can you just um, give um, maybe each of you also um, simply um, um, an indication what who can expect um, what when so so when when do bigger um, amounts of 182 millimeter based modules will be available in asia in um, so um, beyond china so asia um, europe and americas yeah let me start i think uh, <clears throat> 182 you know the you know, uh, uh, I think three of us just mentioned each has more than like 10 gigawatts of uh, capacity already uh, either underway or already established, right? So I think supply on the 182 module is uh, probably not a, a, a issue, right? And you will see a, a customer, we have seen pretty strong pull from the customer side. And every, the, all the customers are very excited to adopt this technology and to evaluate this technology, right? So this is the, so far, I think on the supply side, it, it is uh, not the, uh, it's not the issue. We started production uh, for basically in China, which can supply uh, everywhere except I think the US, right? So you would expect uh, all the different market are okay, you know, to take orders. And the US actually, we're gonna start the first half of next year, right? And for the US capacity on 182. So by then you will see, you know, globally everywhere, you know, you can, you know, receive, uh, take orders for 182 millimeter module. Okay. Yeah, well, for us, uh, Michael, yes, it's, it's, it's a similar situation. No, this product for us, this is fully 35 in the moment. We reached the certificates one month ago, more or less. Uh, we have started to deliver orders one month ago. Uh, we delivered a 100 megawatts. This is for domestic market for for the China market, and this this product is really causing a big traction in the in, in the market for the customers. They are always asking for this uh, product, and we have deliveries uh, for the first quarter of the next year. And yes, uh, the demand is is more or less is 400 megawatts uh, per month at this moment. That this is uh, growing. It's growing up day by day, so it is available now, and for sure it is not having a big experience on site because it's now being installed, you know. But yes, uh, this is the situation; it's now available. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. So, um, so that means if if we if one orders now, then you can really ship. Uh, so. Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, um, let, let's talk a little bit about product qualification because it's a new product um, and um, and testing has to be done. So, um, what's what are you seeing, Sebastian, actually in terms of uh, product quality control for for the new product? So, um, what, um, what what have you been uh, been, been seeing there um, when when the first products came for testing, IC testing? Yeah. So we, we have actually two parts that we are um, con considering. So one is the, the qualification part uh, for those models for certification, the IC certificates that you typically do. Um, well, you see, of course, if you we have a kind of, um, no, it's, well, it's not a revolution for sure. It's a kind of accelerated evolution, I would say. That there's quite, um, you know, typically we were growing like 10, 20 watts per year. Now we probably 50, 60, 80 watts that we do a very quick step. So that means 
there are certain certain challenges. Modules are getting bigger. That means especially mechanical stresses are a concern. Hongbing has mentioned this already before. As I think here we have seen um, specifically failures that that module um, broke. I think here we are actually already at a kind of um, point where things are getting a bit more complicated in regards of, of mechanical uh, application. Um, uh, second thing is then also hotspots. So we have higher currents typically in the modules. There was another failure mode that, that, see, that we have seen more often and um, that we need to consider, especially um, then also later when modules are really shipped then and this actually the second part, uh, supply chain, supply chain quality control, where um, investors, EPCs probably have certain, certain questions at the moment, but I'm happy to see that there are already the first shipments are, are being done because we need actually the track record in order to get those models also really accepted by the banks because as investors, as EPCs, we can want uh, to have these technologies, but at the end, we still need the banks um, who are also going with us this way. Okay, okay. Um, and and, and, and what did you see in terms of um, design changes that, that, that needed to be done to, to pass the, the typical tests? Um, was, there, was there something special that had to be done actually to, to now pass IC, PVL or what, whatever tests? So, uh, so the, the, the point for us is actually here that um, it's um, up to the manufacturers to decide that for us, it's on this part relatively either it passes or it fails. Um, when it fails, of course, there needs to be an adjustment in order to make it work. And, and, um, but I also know that all the manufacturers um, do very internal quality control to make sure that everything goes smoothly. But of course, in, in, uh, if you do this independently, there could be things that, that uh, can happen. Um, and then you do another iteration cycle in order then to find the, the weaknesses, but this will be done at, on the manufacturing side. And, but and you didn't see actually any, any differences with um, earlier moves from whatever, um, when, whenever bigger wafers were integrated or so did you did, is it similar what you're seeing now in terms of failures or problems? Um, or so the failure, rate, no, the failure rate has increased. Yeah, this is what, what we can say. Yeah, without looking too too in too much detail into the design, because as I said, this is up to the manufacturers. Um, we um, test according to respective standards, and there are certain procedures that we follow, and they are the same for all the modules. Yeah, so we can only say that the failure rate have at the moment still increased, and there had to be done some fine tuning. Okay. So maybe to the manufacturer. So what are you seeing actually um, in terms of actually what, what's your your experience and what have you changed actually also in terms of design to, to yeah, address that? Yeah. Go ahead. Go Please. on, go on. Okay, let, let me start. And I think uh, definitely, I think uh, as uh, any new product, right, you need to go through these learning cycles and, and to optimize the design, make sure it's a, it's a, uh, it's a good design. I think uh, fortunately, I think industry has gone through for the last you know, 10, 20 years, a lot of experience on different module designs, different at least on the testing protocols, right? That's been well established. So you know what to, what's the target, and then so you can you know iterate the, the designs and to make sure you know we fulfill those requirements, right? And in the same time, I also trying to we also optimize the design on the module side. Say for example, introduce this smart soldering, right, to help us to uh, reduce actually the ribbon stress and uh, at the bend, right, and as well as you know improve the reliability and improve also the efficiency. Okay, so these actually just need to be evaluated. We have gone through uh, pretty extensive internal reliability testing, right? And and then uh, and now also you know past the external testing as well. We also prepare modules for you know for extended reliability. So that should not you know we have not seen any major obstacles that you know this design are you know uh, are not are not sufficient. Right? So far, I think uh, the all the indication tell us uh, the the. The, the design is 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 uh, is uh, sufficient, you know, to pass all the current uh, testing protocols. Yeah, um, well, yeah, go on, Danny. Go. Sorry. Yeah. Danny, please go ahead. Hello. Um, I think that's uh, for the big wafer, big big panels. 
their, their mechanical road, their um, micro crack risk and hotspots related issues, the uh, big problems. So we redesigned the frame to uh, make sure that their, uh, its mechanical load is uh, good enough to secure, uh, to fit the panel securely. Um, and also we optimized their VOC and the IC to, uh, to, op to balance their performance as well uh, between the performance and the reliability. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, I think we are all agreeing on you know, the challenges uh, mentioned by Sebastian. It was about the dimension of these new models, no? And they are larger, so in some how we need to uh, reinforce the frame, no? To, uh, to, to ensure the same reliability, at least as we have in the previous product, no? With the M6 uh, wafer, no? That is clear. Uh, I think reliability is a key aspect for all the manufacturers. For us, at least, it's, it's really in our NDA. So uh, we, we really pay attention on, on this regard. It's also about the hot spot. Uh, the main concern was to lower the average reverse uh, leakage current. Now the certificate is, uh, is reached, so we achieved that. And well, in, in general, it's some changes and some design challenges, but this is the natural way for the models. No, we are increasing the size of these models, but not in the same value that we can see nowadays in the, in the industry. No, I think it's it's the reasonable way to to include it and always keeping the reliability, which is the, the key point for it. Yeah. So you, you consider it rather actually as a teething problem, so it won't have any effects that you kind of change any warranties or anything so it's, it's really rather just uh, what you experience normally with new products yeah that's it this is our goal no not to change nothing not to change the rules no that we have in the past uh, we are maintaining the same warranties it's sure that uh, from some resource, uh, for example, the, the micro cracks or, or this kind of defects, we need to act on them because the dimension is bigger and therefore they reflect on the models uh, because of the loads could be different. But the goal is this, no? to maintain the same rules that we have in the previous, uh, in the previous era, no? the models. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, so Sebastian, so I think so one question here was also from the audience and um, the higher rates, had, did that have anything maybe also that uh, the, the new IEC um, 2016 um, edition was used um, because it which, which has higher thresholds so that that's maybe also a reason or um, is that not? Uh... Mm, no, I, I, I don't really think that this is the case, but I would also say that it's quite, quite normal if you do something new, you know, if we have to go forward and I think we all agree that, that there's, there's a natural way of, the, of things develop. Yeah, you, you cope with this, you, you're making mistakes, you learn from that. And, and, and at the end, the most important thing is that the standards are fulfilled. Um, and, and as we can see, um, it is possible to fulfill this, but you have to make probably certain adjustments and some iterative um, um, redesigning in, on, in order to meet that. And actually also um, the standards do not do not really change. So there's some discussion at the moment with the really big ones. And I think then we probably looking already in, in a further generation um, because testing of course becomes also a problem. Um, that's, that's, an, that's an issue. If you have really big uh, modules, you need to adjust your, your flashers. Um, you need um, very good conf um, um, conformity um, of, of, the, of the light, uni sorry, uniformity of the light in the flasher. And that, of course, uh, with, that's getting a challenge um, then for the bigger size modules. Uh, for us, we can say that uh, still on the testing side, uh, it's pretty much under control, um, but it needs to be considered. Yeah, especially I think not every um, lab might have the capability of really um, testing appropriately if, uh, if we're getting um, bigger. Okay, okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about markets. I think Ignacio already mentioned that uh, he's, uh, he's seeing um, a very positive response um, of, um, of the market on M10 based modules. So, so Hongmin, Danny, what are you seeing actually? So um, are under, up, how's the feedback from, from customers? Uh, regarding to demand, I think that the number of backlog order is a true indicator measuring the demand. 
So for Jing Solar, currently it sits at over four gigawatts ordering place, both for uh, bifacial and monofacial for 182 panels. So this product has been recognized as the most, um, the most, how to say, the most practical and the best available solution for the coming years, particularly for large scale utility projects. And this is very important. Okay, Hongmin? Yeah, so we have seen very overwhelming, you know, uh, I think uh, demand, you know, interest in this product, right? People see that when we change from, uh, this is a big about 90 watt increase from the uh, M6 product. Right, but on the 72 cell format, and it used to be like a 445, 450 range. Now it's a 435, 440 range, about 90 watt increase. So customer that introduced a lot of interest from the, from the customer side. And so we, I think the, also customer realize, you know, we help to educate customers then to compare the pros and cons of different technology and, and also evaluate the risk right, of different technology. I think uh, this is a 182, this is more of an incremental increase, improve from the 166 and all the risks are manageable, right? And as well as I think compatibility with the existing uh, system designs with existing, you know, existing system hardwares are, are pretty much established, right? So I think customers are more comfortable adopting the 182 uh, millimeter module. And so we have seen very strong, strong demand in marketplace. And so I think we just need to work with the customers directly and closely, right, to help them to understand all the risk factors and as well as, you know, the pros and cons and the benefit. And so, so I think uh, this has been very positive so far for uh, this uh, uh, taking, accepting this product in the marketplace. So if the demand is high, I think then um, looks like the, the, the companies are, or your clients are un understanding also um, the, the product, but but what, what do you think are, because we have now, of course, it, it has been quickly growing actually the, 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 the size in wafers and modules. And I think there's been a lot of movement in the, in the last two years. Um, so what, what are the most frequent questions you get from installers or EPCs um, to, um, <clears throat> regarding um, this, this latest product? Yeah, one of the first question probably is, uh, is, is on the compatibility side, right? First actually is on the tracker, how whether these uh, large size modules is compatible with a major uh, tracker, uh, uh, you know, equipment in the marketplace. So that's why we have been working with all the major tracking uh, tracker companies and to evaluate, to verify the performance, right? So far it's been uh, going pretty uh, smoothly. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> well, I totally agree with Hanbin in this, in this regard. I think it's really important to educate the market uh, because in the beginning we made our own LCOE numbers, let's say, no, we calculate how are we impacting on the BOS. Um, we believe on this number, we made it. Uh, now the market is doing by their own and they need to trust on it. No, They need to trust on the product in terms of the reliability. They need to trust on the compatibility. This is probably the main question. And also they need to, to feel that they are really saving costs. No? And for sure, a lot of references in the market will help to trust in, the, in, in this product. But for the moment, this, the numbers are real. No? We are causing some BOS savings. No? This is not happening always because not always bigger is better. No? Maybe you are spending more money in some equipment of the plants uh, despite of you are allocating more power per modules no for example with the mounting system with the trackers maybe you need to reinforce the trackers to to allow your your module uh, looking at these dimensions no but in general the numbers are always positive and the market is is responding to to it just let me add uh, for our view it is not only a product for utility scale uh, plants 
uh, we are also including an, another products using less number of cells, uh, for example, 66 cells. And this is uh, also really interesting for, let's say, commercial and residential installation. No? So we are looking at this size of wafer, this 182, uh, not only for utility, also for, for other applications. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I think that the most frequent questions that the EPC and the installers will ask us is, um, first is the bigger, the better. The second is, um, how long will this size last? last? Um, I think the market has understand that the, um, that building big panel is one way to increase power. Uh, but it doesn't mean the bigger, the better. The too frequent change of size is creating even more confusion. So I think the market needs a spike that, um, that the performance and the reliability is great while the technical and the economic challenge is minimum. The market needs a spike that uh, the market Needs a uh, needs a spike that um, it could be scale up and hitting high volume uh, manufacturing. So considering these factors, I think a 182 panel will be dominant and it will last uh, at least uh, for at least uh, two or three years. Okay. Okay. So what do you see, um, Sebastian? I think you get also, of course, you're also doing testing of, um, of sites and, um, and um, outdoor testing. So what, what, what's your feedback or the questions you are getting? So we are, besides all our reliability testing certification, we, we also provide, for, for example, technical due diligence to, to banks and to investors. Here we see actually like, um, like interest is, in, is increasing. We're working on first projects that are in the yeah, early early stage in uh, for for financing for for bigger plants. Um, there are of course some questions in regards to reliability and of how to integrate. Um, we are not so much involved on the on the on the cost side, I have to say, um, but we see that yeah, um, all the BOS manufacturers are starting also to adopt. I think this is probably a bit lacking behind, um, but this will this will come. The question would be always then, where do you apply this? Um, if you see that mechanical stress is a problem, then the question is if you put this into a region where you have a lot of snow or where you can expect a lot of wind, that would increase for sure the risk. But let's say in, in moderate climates where you would not expect heavy snow um, or heavy wind loads, I think that would, would very likely um, more quick to adapt this technology. Okay. Yeah, you, you already mentioned our reliability. Let's maybe spend a few minutes on that. So we had actually a month ago our uh, reliable module design conference and um, we had um, then also DuPont there and did an interview afterwards also with them. And they um, <clears throat> simply kind of mentioned um, and also so that, that maybe at the moment too much happens almost at the same time. And it's um, amazing, actually. I think we are all in, in solar over a decade um, and uh, how, how much has been happening actually really in the last uh, uh, two years. So, so um, and, 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 and on, 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 on every level, it doesn't matter if it is on the wafer, on the cell, on the module level, where we see actually new encapsulation materials popping up, uh, we're seeing, um, Whatever it doesn't matter what, what you're talking about pace whatever everywhere there's a lot of innovation. Can we and uh, this goes maybe also to 182, but also beyond that, can can the solar industry manage that? Because at the moment it's also the IEA recently, um, which we know has been basically always wrong on solar, not by a small but by a huge margin when they forecast the demand. Recently, um, the head of IEA um, <clears throat> said uh, solar is the new king. So, so that means uh, with solar and the solar market is probably this, this year growing even um, this despite, um, despite the coronavirus. So, so that means uh, it looks like we're really, really seeing um, a positive momentum and why we have to increase capacity as an industry quickly to probably meet demand from also newer customers. On the one hand, we're also innovating a lot. Is this actually handleable? Is this doable? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think, Michael, it's all, 
it's all about the competitiveness of this technology, you know. Uh, we are all working. <clears throat> this is the, the same reason why we are trying to reach more power per module, no? We are trying to increase the density of power because we are trying to reduce the cost of the BOS and therefore the cost of the overall uh, of the plant and make at all the, the this industry, the PV technology or this uh, generation uh, technology more competitive, no? So this traction, which is uh, demanded by the market, the market knows which is the, 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 the the generation cost for its technology and they are choosing the, the PV technology, no, because of our efforts as well, no. So this is why we are betting strong uh, on this regard, because as as much we grow on, on this, we will gain a market share uh, because of the competitive of the of the, of the industry you know, of the technology, no. It, this is our our view on it, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, solar industry has been surprising the market, right? On the, always on the positive side. And both demand and the, the cost, right? This is all, you know, the demand actually coming from the cost, right? If you see the, the solar cost uh, reduction has always been surprising the market and doing better than market can expect. So I think that trend will continue, but you know I think uh, we need to be smart, right? And going forward, if you look at the modules right now, the cost is less than twenty cents per watt before this uh, recent you know material uh, price hike. And so with there, you probably need to look into you know the technologies that can leverage not only lower down the module cost, but also can lower the BOS cost, right? So those probably are the directions and then uh, people are looking at. And on the other hand, you also, there are a lot of, for the, all the new technology, there are a lot of uh, homework that we need to do, right? Fortunately, I think there is a huge investment through the whole supply chain, right? From Ingo wafer cell module and also uh, deployment that, that a lot of money are pouring into the market. And then, so you have to have this capacity to, to work out, you know, to demonstrate, to exercise, to expose those issues and work out the solutions. So I think this market, I think, uh, you know, we, we are very confident. We just, we do need to do our homework, right? For all the new technology, and uh, we need to go through all the established uh, testing protocols and then product and uh, quality controls to ensure the material, the, the, material uh, the, the product going to the customer space, going to the market are really a solid product. But we are pretty confident that's, you know, uh, with the investment from the whole industry that can be done, that is being done, uh, being done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, from my perspective, so I'm actually today, I'm very happy in, in our newly opened innovation space here in our Shanghai, Shanghai office. So, for us, so TUV is uh, more than 104 years old. So, we have been. Uh, um, innovations in our DNA. So from, from vessel inspections to, we have been down doing solar for close to 40 years and there was nothing available that I think people think were thought to be a bit crazy. Um, you probably have all have heard this already in the past uh, when people started in the 80s really to develop products, to develop standards and, um, and, and now we have such a market and who would have believed this um, maybe only 10 years ago uh, that we would have such a market size and that only um, was possible due to innovation on the on the product side, uh, on on reliability aspects, and we see that we have many reliable products on the market. And of course, those new technologies need to prove that. Um, banks are looking into this. So for me, bankability, in regards of, of technical due diligence, bankability is always one of the key. Um, so that means we need um, very good testing protocols. They also need to develop. So when we have new uh, technologies in um, coming. Uh, that means also maybe sometimes to, to go beyond the standards. So standards is always a kind of minimum, um, but from an investor point of view, especially if we are moving into new things, um, getting bigger, um, using uh, different technologies, it also might be possible to look there a bit beyond that in order to make sure really that the plant and the module um, layout can sustain for 20, 30 years in the, in the field. And that's the critical part and that needs to be proved at the end. Okay, then then let's um, let's maybe talk about quickly also about system design and operations. So I think there are not so many products out here yet, but if if some probably are, and you have been also of course testing also something in the field, maybe can you share something on that also um, how you also 
or the feedback you got from the those guys who installed it um, were they okay with the size of the the modules and um, a little bit on feedback on 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 how 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 that worked so for for instance string solar has delivered the 182 panel for a 50 gigawatt uh, for 50 megawatts utility project in vietnam which is under construction now so this product is by far the most powerful in the commercial offering with, uh, with power outputs of 540 to 545 watts and the model efficiency of 21%. It measures 2.27 meters long plus 1.113 meters wide weighing 28 kilograms, which it fits um, well enough for two people installation. And it is perfectly, um, perfectly compatible with a centralized inverter and a conventional tracking system. So in addition, uh, no portrait loading and uh, uh, lying flat package is required for fitting this product into your standard 40 feet uh, um, high cuber shipping containers. So the logic of this 182 uh, wafer based panel uh, is based on looking at every aspect of uh, PV project deployments and find the best balanced solutions. And you know that making um, the wafer or the panel big or even bigger is easy, but if on the other hand, it increased the macro crack risks, increased the hotspot related issues, or it is sacrificing the mechanical strength or sacrificing the installation and the shipping convenience or breaking the installer's ergonomic or shifting the cost to other uh, BOS components. I think, um, I don't think these big size mean anything. So, this is the feedback from our um, customers. Okay. Yeah, I think we just delivered the first, you know, hundred uh, uh, three, you know, megawatt project by using the hundred eighty two uh, module, right? And so we probably will, should be able to share the progress, you know, on the on this project pretty soon. But you know, so far I think it's, uh, it's uh, so far or it's pretty positive. There's no, you know. Uh, uh, negative feedback so far, but we need to watch. I think this just started, right? There are a lot of learnings that the whole industry need to go through, not only on the manufacturing side, but also on the deployment side. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for us, it's it's really similar experience that my colleagues. Uh, we deliver around 100 megawatt for for domestic market. Of course, uh, not issues with this installation. Uh, our customer, their, their main concern was about the, um, how to manage these large sites uh, models. No? Um, their experience finally was good because they feel that, of course, these models are bigger, uh, they are larger and uh, more heavy. No? So, but it was better than they expected. No? I agree with Danny. I think uh, this is the, the best logic for the evolution of the models because the size and also the increase of the cost of the rest of the equipment that other models are causing, mainly looking at the, um, the width of these models, because this is a feedback that we are uh, receiving from our customers. If you are using this width of models 1.3 meters uh, with, uh, in a portrait position uh, for the trackers, you are losing the length or you are increasing the length of the tracker and you are increasing then the number of foundations, the number of uh, engines or at the end of the day, the, the length of the tracker, and this is uh, really impacting in the cost of this equipment. So we are not seeing it's, it's the best way as we are uh, understanding and we are reaching from the customers that with the N10 based uh, models, the construction, it's really similar or at least the same as we are saving cost in the BOS. So this is the improvement. Okay, so, so I, maybe the final question, I think so, um, you made all uh, a great case for 182. So um, then you already said that you believe that for the next two or three years, the installers can be 
um, pretty can sleep pretty quiet actually um, because there there won't be too many changes um, in um, in all these sizes. But if we look a little bit further, so that means looking into 2025. So um, what will we see there? What will be the um, the the the, 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 the standard product there in terms of modules, cell wafer sizes, and um, yeah, so simply I would like to have an, an, an outlook from you what to expect in the midterm, if that's possible. <laughs> I think um, this size will definitely be dominant type and will stay stable for at least two or three years. So looking into the 2024-25, I think based on these size platforms, integrating new technologies, for example, the HJT, top call, or commercialized N-type, yeah, all these new technolo commercialized technologies, uh, integrated them with this 182 wave, wave based. OK. Yeah, see, we see that, you know, probably similar thing, right? The, the larger wafer, using larger wafer to improve the module power and reduce the BOS and LCOE probably will likely settle around this uh, 182 uh, millimeter, right? Further increase on the wafer size and probably will bring very limited benefit, at the same time introduce a lot more risk, right? So that's why we think, you know, this is, uh, it's not worth it, you know, to make it even larger. And so if you look what's beyond that, as I mentioned, I think the next public will focus on the cell and module efficiency improvement, right? Instead of increasing, purely increase the size, right? To lower their BOS cost. And also we hopefully will see, probably you will see that, you know, the, the bifacial adoption will become more and more common, right? And this will ha help our customers another big step in terms of reducing increased energy yield and reduce the LCOE. So we'll see probably that, that that will be a trend. I think uh, on the sales side, you will see, you know, next few years, uh, next a few days, you will have a lot of discussions on the advanced and type sale technology. I think some of them may, you know, come into marketplace, become cost competitive in the near future. Say, yeah, yeah, from our side, we are, yeah, it's what, what the market is demanding is to increase also the module efficiency. So we are understanding clearly that for the uh, short term, we need to move forward on the end type cells or even uh, Trojaxian technology or Topcom. This is clearly in the, in the short term. Um, looking at the size of the wafers, uh, we have our mind open on this regard. We, it, it is clear for us as well that the M10, this 182 millimeter cell, is the next step. This is the technology that will dominate for the following, let's say, two or three years. But um, maybe it's not about, it's not all about the, the wafer size, no? Maybe we can find some kind of new uh, size for the wafer, but in the end, a, a good dimension for the model, no? This combination could be interesting. So let's see if the challenges uh, that the bigger cells uh, are facing nowadays uh, could be solved or not, no? For now, this is clear for us that M10 is the choice, no? So, yeah. Uh, interesting future that we will leave yet. <laughs> what does the testing institute see? Yeah, so we um, see this, um, well, first of all, a bit neutral. So the models need to fulfill this, the standards. That's the, that's the first point. Um, I think it's on a, on a good way um, um, to, to be proven. Um, we need to see the data that we are achieving also from certification, really coming now into uh, the deliveries. Um, we, are, we are testing those models also um, project related. And, and this is actually for, for me the point where I can say, okay, those models um, seem to be really also reliable in the, in the mass production so that they can also be really adopted and accepted by the investors and by the banks. And, and this part is at the moment, so we're lacking this kind of data. I'm, 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 I'm positive on it, uh, but still um, I, see, I believe that the next year will show if it works out very well, then I think, um, especially with the cost reduction that we can achieve with the BOS, that will be a very, very positive future. And um, as I said, I believe that, um, um, uh, that this technology can have a big, really big chance in the market. 
Okay, perfect. I think that's a nice final word for the first day of our um, high efficiency solar event. Um, thanks uh, to the panelists. Thanks to all the speakers. Uh, thanks to all the attendees, participants who stayed with us. So, um, Tomorrow we will continue with the second day. So after we dealt today with PERC and mostly also with um, larger um, wafers, um, M1082 millimeter based products, we will look tomorrow into a very hot technology these days, heterojunction cell technology, less production steps and higher output. There's a big promise um, and it looks like at least um, several companies believe now or increasingly more companies believe now that HJT really can fulfill that there's quite some investments um, equipment manufacturers material manufacturers there's a lot of innovation going on so we will have tomorrow a really nice and distinctive panel um, representing um, <clears throat> research um, from Europe from China um, we have one of the one of the leading module manufacturers, which is uh, betting on um, on HJT with Ryzen, and um, and um, we will also have my colleague Shravan present our findings in our new HJT module report. So please um, come back, stay with us again tomorrow for three hours. Um, that's our new report, which we will publish. Thanks again. Have a nice evening. Um, Hongbin, you still have the day ahead of you. For the rest, I think it's almost over. Thanks. Have a nice evening. Good night. Bye bye. Thanks, Michael. See you Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.